My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to send emails using the Gmail API and Java. This can come in really handy. Well, first of all, if your application needs to send emails on your behalf as uh, with some Gmail account, or even if you create some small automation helpers, some jobs, some tools that run uh, on your machine or some server that then can just send an email to yourself as some reminder or pointer that something is going on. So I use this as some, well, automation stuff that runs on my server that then sends me an email if I need to know about something. Well, how to use this using the Gmail account. So if we go to our Gmail, well, then we can manage and use such things using the Google Cloud API. So all of that is basically done. If you go to console.cloud.google.com and then you can use um, these things and for example you can search for a um, certain API and that uses the Gmail API. I really love these Google APIs because they're really helpful even if you use for example you want to use uh, Google Translate you can use an API for that and that comes in very handy. Okay so how to use this? The interesting thing you can check out um, the documentation is first of all how to authenticate yourself because that's not that's not super straightforward. You have to know a little bit about OAuth and what's going on there. And um, it also depends on the type of account that you have. So for example, some of you used uh, Gmail uh, for a G Suite account as they were used to be called or are called or a Google Workspace with uh, which then is a sort of well, professional account or one that you can use with your own domain. Then you can do more things here. But first of all, if we check out the documentation we see well uh, first of all how to create access there are different types um, of access uh, credentials and what we have to use so for me this is a just very basic uh, gmail account that everybody can create we have to use an oauth client id this always is be used if you authenticate as a sort of end user and you as yourself even if you want to send an email just to yourself you are an well own end user and um, or if you want to do something on behalf of another user if you have these typical websites where you need to log in with google or something like this then you uh, use that sort of stuff an alternative would be to use a service account uh, that then can act as well some technical uh, user but with this there's a caveat you actually have to have uh, this uh, google workspace or google admin uh, console available and if you just have a regular gmail uh, client um, that is not possible here. You would need to have the other accounts and typically uh, you would need to pay for uh, one of that in the smallest um, uh, version at least. And this is why I want to show you the OAuth way. Okay, so for this, uh, you will see how to uh, create an account and all of that stuff. But first of all, what we do, we go to this cloud console and uh, check out this uh, Gmail API and then see what we uh, have here, which first of all, that's just an API that needs to be um, enabled that then we can try out. So um, let's say we um, have a project here available or we would need to uh, create um, a project here that then if um, it works or not, so we can say, if there's a test uh, project available or we can create our own test project. So for me, I had one, I think that's still in the cache that I deleted. So probably it will ask you in some sorts to have some sort of um, test project um, available. I call this test project or test project for Melo or whatever you want to have. Then it will auto uh, create some ID and then we can just uh, create this which then will be um, available for some um, API or which you then can use for some API. Let's uh, check this out. So it should ask you in some way or another uh, to have your uh, test projects available. And then if we now go back for our Gmail API, we should be able to enable and try this API for our new test project here. And then, this will just um, take a few moments and then we can use this API and manage the access here. Okay, now what we do in our Java project, I created a Java project here for a Java playground that we will use in order to use these APIs. So basically what I wanna have, I want to have a class I call this Gmailer. They sh that should, let's say we can instantiate something like that, send, uh, 
an email or send send mail for a particular user for now we say well send an email to ourselves so that should just have a subject line and a message that then we will create so let's say we have um, a method here that we have in this way and then we do stuff here so basically that should uh, send an email uh, to our uh, ourselves with subject and message okay how does this work we can um, check out now this is active already we can check out the documentation for it to get a quick start uh, with java now um, there are a few well descriptions how to do this there's some code available here is an example for gradle i use a maven project but we can uh, check this out here and basically say well if you go on github um, for this particular build file first of all you need uh, three dependencies here um, which i'm gonna just add in order to get uh, the code of course this doesn't work like that we have to include the proper dependencies for this particular um, stuff let's say that's google uh, oauth client jetty for the version not this one three four one that's down there then we want to include uh, the other ones so api client should that be in this version and then finally so the first two ones are just required to get um, the authentication to just well authenticate which we're going to see in a second how this works and now the actual um, API that's available the gmail um, API in a particular version we're not using this one it has an interesting version string but we use uh, the latest one here and then we're going to update our uh, Maven project here. And now we should be able to use these um, APIs there. OK, let's uh, try this out. Let's uh, go to the sample code. We can have a look at the uh, quick start. What is available uh, here is to say, OK, um, let's do something like that. What it does here, it looks a little bit interesting. Um, at first, in order to build up something uh, here, you need some credential. And this credential, that now depends on what we're gonna create in a second. Uh, but for us, we use some OAuth credential, which then will, well, will be automatically done by this code, by these APIs that we're using, which basically uses a so-called uh, credentials file, which is a JSON file with your uh, client ID and client secret. And then it creates this uh, typical OAuth flow where then it asks you in a browser to authenticate. Are you sure you want to trust this app and so on? And then it will have a code and store that locally. How this works um, is as follows that it will store stuff in an own directory. I'm now going to go and of course copy paste program. I'm going to copy paste this code here and say, OK, in order to uh, create a certain uh, credential what i need to do i need to uh, load a certain file that we are gonna create um, in a second this will be a json file and say okay this now it's gonna load that in i um, write this a little bit uh, differently i say we have this um, method load and then we have a uh, json uh, factory which is the json factory the default one here and input stream reader for that input stream where i say okay create that in this way that i say uh, create this for the input stream resource so in java you know this is a um a resource for your class path so we're gonna create this in a second and maybe that resides on the source uh, main resources and then we say, okay, that's interesting. And then we say, okay, create the rest uh, credentials. We're gonna import all of these statements. And as always, you get the code um, afterwards. You can check this out on GitHub then. And now what we're gonna do, okay, authorization uh, flow builder. Let's put this as a. argument JSON factory HTTP transport 
what we're gonna um, have a look at so let's go further in our code we need to do this authorization flow and that means um, you can sort of ignore these transport and JSON uh, factory builders that's just used internally uh, at the uh, with the API the secrets will be the secret that we're gonna create in a second and then it asks for some scope and that is uh, quite interesting um, we say well we have we have some Gmail scopes and then well what we're gonna have is the scope for send so basically this means that we say well what are we well authenticate um, or, or authorized what, what are we authorized to do so the, this client secret that we're gonna uh, create um, has a certain scopes okay and then the thing that is being stored which you will see in a second is basically uh, going to be stored in a local directory which per default is called tokens you could change this and this is one that you then need to take into account because then your uh, well basically uh, authentication is stored there and these are these types as you see is that this already well what it does we will see this in a second it basically has this authorization code flow and then says okay what you're going to do it will redirect you to a browser where you need to add your consent and then it will redirect to a local host uh, running uh, process that just temporarily runs so you have a local a server that sends it up in a certain port let's say this one and then you um, are going to authorize um, your user here so we will see how this works in a second and once we've done that what we can do we can say okay finally we can now use that um, gmail service here and say okay that's the actual type that you're going to use to interact with the gmail api so we're going to say well i use um, this http transport that is here written in some uh, where well, we have it uh, here in some variables I don't quite uh, like the names but we can change that of course as always when you copy and paste code from the internet double check and adapt it to, our, uh, to what uh, you need here so let's say just for the sake of the example that's gonna create <laughs> throw an exception we say okay this is uh, the HTTP transport the JSON factory we had already we're gonna uh, create this in this way so that's that application name should, should just be test mailer and now we create uh, this gmail service so that's basically that that you say okay load this credential and then have a service from which you then can work so basically how this works is to say okay do something uh, with it and for example then well send an email how this works uh, we will see because for for this that just will list something that is not that uh, that interesting what we're gonna have a look at is another example for sending email now how to finally use this and you will see okay how to create um, a so-called uh, email message and then how to create this gmail message here okay there is also a complete example that we can uh, use as such so once we have the ser service available we basically say we're gonna now copy and uh, paste uh, this code and say okay once that is the case please create this and what it does let's import this it uses a session from well this API is not available here we will also need to include um, this from the Java X mail API so that's also interesting let's have a look at this build file that's that dependency Java X mail that we also that's a quite uh, old one that we also need to include here mail from uh, Java X mail in a specific uh, version so that's required as well and then this will be implemented as Java X mail session and this MIME message from a specific uh, email address and the email address for me is just my uh, test email address that we're going to use 
So that's an email account that I have just for testing purposes. And then let's go back here. We're going to use this both in, from, and to, to. So we're going to add a recipient. And in our case, in this case, we're going to send an email to ourselves. So that's basically creating this, what is called my message, this type. And then what this um, needs to be well used with is to create this Gmail type, which is called message. Okay, now this um, name collides here. Why? Because we had um, a message there. I'm just going to rename this real quick to say, okay, this should be um, a message here. And then I can create this to um, rename this to message and say, okay, please create that as such. Use it as this Gmail API message. So that's uh, that comes then from the Gmail API and that sends this. Okay. Now the interesting part is here in that line, which is how we interact with the Gmail API. So here it says service uses messages send. So that uses the action send as behalf of which user, well, that's me. So that's as if I go to my uh, Gmail client and compose and send a message. So that's well uh, using um, me here and sending this message with the from and to that I just created. Okay, perfect. So that uses this and then says, okay, um, that's the message. Okay, whatever. And then when you interact with the API that then can um, have these uh, JSON response exceptions. So basically, if you have an error, you can have a look at what will be shown there. For now, let's just keep it uh, as that. We say we're going to create a message and then send it here. Okay, this is not what we're going to use. We're going to um, use our own subject and message. So as always, again, when you copy and paste code, double check it and adapt it. So that's going to uh, use this one now. Now we also want to, well, refactor a little bit um, this code because when we say, well, it doesn't make sense to create this service each and every time, we're certainly going to um, outsource that to our constructor and say, okay, create this here. Create this as a field for the service. And then I'm going to use this credentials here for the send mail. This already then uses this service field that is already then authenticated at that time. And then a subject or a new message. And then for the message, you can well have whatever you would uh, like here. So for example, let's say that should be a text block. Um, dear reader, hello world, best regards. And then that should send this email. Okay. Now, first of all, um, we wrote a lot of code. You can check this uh, out later on but we use this sort of client secret that actually doesn't exist yet, which we need to create. So if you have a look at um, up there, this JSON that I didn't finish writing the path for that, first of all, well, we need to create here. So how this works is as follows. If we go now to our um, cloud console that is available for the uh, Gmail API, we could go and say, okay, under credentials, um, I need uh, to create a credential here, a client, and then also, well, a constant a screen, I need to configure that. Okay, how does this work? Let's say we want to create a, a credential. It even asks you to, well, help me choose or which type you want to have. We want to have an OAuth client ID, but let's use this wizard first just to understand what we want. Um, we say, okay, we want to um, select an API, the Gmail API which data you will be accessing. Okay. In our case, we say user data because it's like we are using our user. You could also say data belonging to your own application, but for this, in order to set it up properly, you, you would need a Google a workspace account. You can do this, but then let's say, okay, next that's a test mailer. 
use a support email if you need that well it's just ourself you could uh, use a logo but this is just for the first time for yourself so this doesn't really make sense uh, you could say okay here you need to provide an information save and continue but that's again only an internal stuff but what is now interesting are the scopes where now we say okay which scope would we would like to have we would like to have a gmail api scope so basically um, that's going to use well either everything or just to be more specific we will say okay um, draft and send emails okay what you can also do if you don't want to properly send emails you can also insert an email into your own inbox which is almost the same than it already will be shown as as read typically um, but let's just use gmail compose and say update here and then this that's the same um, what we added in our code Okay, save and continue. Then you will have um, a client ID, which type for us, we use now desktop app or something that just runs as a standalone thing. It doesn't need to be a web application. Well, it can be, but it depends. If you say this should just be a process that sends it, then you can use uh, this one. Then it doesn't, um, well, it doesn't actually matter if it's a desktop app, but just some standalone uh, thing. You can also uh, check this out here. And then it will have, a client credential that then a client secret will be created you can download it and this is the one what we're going to use in our code if I uh, configure that we'll do this in a second but also as it uh, showed you you would need to configure your OAuth concept uh, screen that then says what do we have here well we would need to have our test user that is just again because uh, then I don't need to verify and make it an official app or something like that just for the test purposes that's totally fine and say okay that's that and let's see this should be sufficient already then we can use our credential how does this work we go now and uh, copy this in and say uh, our client secret should be there on the source main uh, resources I'm going to use this uh, particular path or of course I could rename it and say okay client uh, secrets and so on and so forth what I just created and then well let's try it out let's try out if this already works I'm just gonna run my application here and see what happens I'm gonna run this as a main method and now what it says please open the following address in your browser and it already opened uh, one particular browser of mine but I'm actually gonna copy and paste this into this session where I'm already authenticated where then I say okay paste this in here it asks you you can check out the URL for offline access of this client ID and so on and so forth for your particular scope so that is then the redirect I say please um, use my, uh, my user now it hasn't verified this app which is totally fine for us because we developed it okay then it asks you for the scopes so this, these are the scopes that you authenticated already I didn't authenticate one yet and it says hey it wants to send emails yeah that's fine and now it actually you can see this it re, um, redirected you to localhost and this um, port and says okay now you may want to uh, close this window okay and now it says okay it configured that and now apparently it sent just an email into your inbox okay interesting let's uh, try this out let's see and yes from me a new message dear reader hello world and I send an email to myself okay great so now the interesting thing to note is that here not only did this work but also it used this OAuth information to store these credentials in a local directory that then well if you want you can save and just have your uh, yourself um, you could argue whether that's the perfect way for some automated uh, means but it's the easiest way here to get started so here I have a directory tokens that then has the stored credential in the binary format so you could then take this and save and use and so on so now if I would like to change something in my application and then um, a new new message and then execute it again now it doesn't ask for the OAuth constant because it already has these credentials stored locally so it will just reuse that that is already authenticated and I could uh, say okay let's see uh, what is happening here a new new message just 
arrived and you see this now. So you're sending a message to yourself using this means. Okay, so again, what did we do to recap? We used this way to authenticate using the uh, these client secrets that we just created that was stored locally in this JSON file. You can check this out then with your secret. That then the first time, if it's not um, authenticated already, uses this um, code flow, this OAuth dance to just have to redirect to your browser to ask for your consent and then uh, to store that locally in this directory, which then later on also will be read again. And then if that is the case, you have the service and then you can use that to do whatever you can send emails or do all other stuff. You can check out this uh, Gmail API, how to use that. But this is already very helpful if your application, well, needs to send emails, especially emails to yourself as some sort of a reminder, and then you can take it from there. So this is something uh, to get started with. Just a quick uh, note on these access credential types. If you do have a Google Workspace and you have an admin account for your workspace with your own custom domain, for example, you could also use a service account. I've done that, that, that works as well. The only thing you need that um, well, type of account. And then if you create a service account, you also need to grant it, which is uh, done there. That's a typical um, mis uh, mistake for domain-wide delegation for the service account. That is um, uh, also described here how to do this, that then is valid for your particular uh, particular service account that then you load, well, in a um, easier way into your local uh, code uh, execution without using this OAuth means. So that's just a different way if that's the case for you. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. So I personally use these uh, Google APIs, not just for Gmail, uh, but also for things like translation, which sometimes can be helpful if you're learning a language and you want to build yourself a tool for that or something like this. I think it's kind of cool to explore. And that's a way now to get started, especially sending an email uh, to yourself. So if this was helpful, I would really appreciate um, if, you, if you like the video and if you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.